Hi, my name is uh, <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jonas. This is Sublime Media, and on this channel, I talk about records and record-related stuff. Like today, when I'm going to do some recommendations straight from my shop. Yeah, that's right. I went through my entire stock, and some of the records when I flipped through caught my attention, and and I wanted to to sort of highlight them for you guys because more people need to know about these records. So I'm going to show you the records. I'm going to do some sound samples. I think it's like eight, rec eight or nine records, something like that. But first, the intro thingy. So as you know by now, I have a shop called sublimemedia.se, so go check it out. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, I think it's turned out pretty well these eight months after I sort of started the shop. And my selection is the things that I talk about and have talked about here on YouTube for the past 14 years. Uh, so psych, prog, garage and a little bit of jazz. So let's start with an A&M Records record. Uh, this is Steve Young with Rock Salt and Nails, 1969. Uh, uh, out, it's called the first Outlaw Country record, but I don't think that this was the first. And I even, I mean, I don't know that much about country, but I don't feel that this is a sort of straight up Outlaw thing. This is more in the vein of Graham Parson. And Graham Parson and Gene Clark is actually guesting on this record. I have no idea what Steve uh, Steve Young did after this. I know that he released a bunch of records and I have sort of no interest in those, but this has been on my want list for so long. And the reissues that uh, Real Gone Music does to to uh, these, these, uh, mu this music is fantastic. So in this case, with this record, you get it on a, a sort of transparent or rock salt uh, thing and just to to uh, let you know how much I love this record I actually I have I think I have like three or four in stock right now uh, ready to ship ship out just because and I never buy that many because it's too expensive just having records sitting on you know in stock on the shelf but this one I'm so convinced that people will love this and there is one song that is very sort of famous and that is Seven Bridges Road which I think that the Eagles did a, a cover version of uh, later on but the thing to check out is the first track like uh, that's how strong my love is that track when you have heard it it sticks with you I'm noticing myself like singing along with this when you know going to work in a shower <laughs> Stuff like that. So yeah, uh, Steve Young, Rock Salt and Nails. And I'm gonna play a sample of That's How Strong My Love Is. That's how strong my love is Oh, now that's how strong my love is That's how strong my love is Oh, now that's how strong my love is I'd be the weeping willow, drying in my tears. You can go swimming when you fear. So yeah, pretty fun. I rarely talk about country, but I have a soft spot for some country. At least. Not all, but some country. Uh, like Townsville Sand and Graham Parsons, you know. So... Moving on to a completely different genre, and this is maybe more in the vein of what you are <laughs> used to, but sort of rare psych. This is uh, Three Through Hell uh, with uh, C.A. Quintet. These guys were from the US. This was recorded in 1968. They released this in a thousand copies back in the day, and it sold out right away. But <laughs> the 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 record company that released they had no interest in this music and they never did a, a repress of sorts i think it was first in the 90s that it got a, a, a sort of decent reissue and that one was on cd amazing fast out heavy psych this is great and sundance that the sundays that uh, does these reissues they are just almost flawless a great one 
great, great one. This is from 2022. Again, one that I stocked up on because it's just such a iconic record. And if you want an original press of this, it's like a $5,000 record. So here's a sound sample to for you all to check out. Yeah, staying in the sort of rock realm, this is a prog rock record through and through. And this deserves to be in those sort of, when you talk about classic records from the beginning of the 70s, this should be one to talk about. And I'm talking about the, the Three Man Army 2. I think that this is the first record out of three. So did you follow? Like this is it's called two, but it's the first one and it did three. Uh, but don't take my word for it. I had a hard time like finding if this was the first or the second one or maybe maybe the third. They they released records between 1971 and 74 and this is the 1974 classic. As type six says, the bro uh, this uh, the, from the uh, Madmen's of uh, Adrian and Paul Gerwitz, and Gerwitz uh, also were in a group, super group, but group of sorts with Ginger Baker later on. But before that, they released this, and this this is like all over the place, which I love. It's prog, it's rock, it's classic rock at sometimes with some ballads. And I'm going to do a sound sample of I Can't Make the Blind See, which I think with the orchestral work on it is the best track on this. But every single track is great. And yeah, obscure one too. Uh, don't see many talk about that uh, either. So here's the sample. Yeah, I hope you liked that great rock record and we are going to move into more jazz territory now with Jack Van Poole. Jack Van Poole was one of the more known jazz players in Holland, I think. So a Dutch jazz musician. He came out in the 60s and <clears throat> I think he's pr pretty hyped, but this one was recorded in the 70s, like 72, 74, I should know, but I don't. Um, and it's great. It has that sort of 70s production, but his playing is so smooth. Really, really awesome. Uh, they do a great take on Ain't No Sunshine, which takes its time. Really, really nice. But I'm going to give you a sound sample of a song that I, I can't really pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. Um, which is a bit more faster paced. But this is, this is still a, a, a pretty mellow record. And his, as I said, his organ playing on this one is to dream of. Now, this is an enigma for me because I bought this some years ago when this was released. And I think that the, like music on vinyl just printed too many and yeah, limited to 750 copies. I bought it on sale uh, back in the day when it was released. So um, I have no idea what happens to this because it's a fantastic record. And now I bought it to the store I think I have it priced pretty correctly and it's the 50th anniversary of this hijacking uh, record record store day uh, exclusive and I think that this is on gold vinyl my edition is anyway yeah numbered copies uh, on gold vinyl looks great so if you're into colored vinyl it's a dream come true sounds terrific too uh, yeah so here's the sound sample for you
So I'm back. I don't know this, the, you know, the magic with editing, but I just had a customer coming at the door, uh, went down here digging and bought some records. So uh, I've been away for like an hour. Uh, so let's see, where were we? Yes, Walter uh, Dickinson, 1962 to my queen. This is my next recommendation. <clears throat> so staying in the jazz realm. This is a gorgeous record like and I had no idea about this because you get lists from distributors and you go through the lists and when you find something that sparks your interest and you don't know about it you uh, I mean I, I look it up and uh, if it if, you know the price is right um, and the reviews I can and I sample it sounds cool and the reviews says that it sounds great then I buy it and I stock up on it and I did that with this and it's it's mind-blowingly good I'm not a huge vibraphone guy. I, I I shouldn't say like it's one of my least favorite instruments when it comes to standard jazz. But he plays the vibraphone just like Oscar Peterson plays the piano. Really sort of very chord based, like not soloing all over the, the place, like very subtle, very smooth. And uh, it's just great. Uh, this is titled to my queen. The first side, the entire side is just that track, like a tribute to his wife, which is great. It's almost a little bit like spiritual, but very lovely tune, 17 minutes long. Uh, you also have Andrew Hill on piano, uh, George Tucker on bass and Andrew Cyril on drums. And this was originally released on New Land. And I'm not that familiar with New Newland. It's very hard to get Newland records here in Sweden. Anyways, uh, when it comes to the pressing quality, this is from Sounds Good Original Recordings. And I don't think that these are sketchy, sketchy pressings. I mean, they are on Discogs. Discogs hasn't uh, claimed them as a, a pirate pr pressing plant or a distributor or whatever it's called. Uh, but the titles is just like some of them I can't so I, I'm, I don't know if anyone knows let me know but it's digital obviously like these are not in any shape or form uh, audio file pressing it's like a CD on vinyl but they're very affordable and in my opinion they sound good like they sound really good I've talked about this before uh, these before so I have bought some of uh, some of these because it's been consistently good quality sound. Like uh, I'm going to play you. I'm not going to play you uh, a sample of to my queen. I'm going to play you a sample of God Bless the Child, which is the last song on the record, and it's the Billy Holiday song. And I think it's a brilliant. Listen to the bow work on the bass in the beginning, um, and the flowing sort of vibraphone. I think it's. Brilliant, brilliant track. Okay, the next one is this is a soul funk classic from 1973. Super rare, it says on the hype sticker. I don't know, but it's a rare one. It's a it's pretty expensive nowadays. But I actually found an OG on, in a thrift store here in Sweden for uh, 10 Swedish crowns. So $1. <laughs> but this is way back in the day, and I sold it for some prog records. Anyway, uh, East Coast. This is brilliant. Like, And it says Soul Funk Classic, but this is it's definitely soul. Definitely funk. A little bit psychedelic. Uh, a little bit jazzy. This is all over the map, like, and I love it. Uh, I'm gonna s uh, s play you uh, uh, the sample of "I Found You," the first track on the first side, which I think is brilliant. It's one of those songs with with the chorus that you can't really get uh, out of your head when you have heard it. Lovely one, funky. It has everything. Like, listen to this. I don't regret it.
So yeah, funky drums and, and the guitar. I love the guitar. It's like a fussy guitar, but it's way back in the mix. It's, it's really, really cool. Okay, uh, let's see. Eden Rose. Rose, I haven't brought that. So fuck that one. Uh, Brian Bennett. Okay. Yeah, this is another one that is just like... This is a wild one. Uh, also on Real Gone Music, again, uh, Record Store, they uh, released the impossible futuristic and funky 1978 album from Shadows drummer Brian Benetti. First ever US vinyl release uh, on colored vinyl and all that good, good stuff. 4,500 copies. Yeah, uh, this is a cosmic disco record. And I'm, I don't collect disco because I'm not, I don't like disco, but <laughs> this is, uh, when I heard it th this the first time, it was like listening to Brian Eno having a bastard child with the Funkadelics. Like it's, it's ambient and funky at the same time. It's like from another dimension. It's like you send up a disco ball into the stratosphere. This is great, and I'm, I'm gonna do a sound sample. I think it's the first track that I uh, that I listened to uh, today, with the drums, bass, everything just perfect, and it's a little bit faster paced than some of the other tracks. So listen to the entire record before you uh, pull the pull the trigger. But if if you like what you are hearing, I pretty sure you won't be disappointed on the entire uh, record. So yeah, here we go. Uh, again, uh, moving to uh, the jazz territory, and I've actually had these up in my store. I've sold some, but not nearly enough. I was so stoked when I saw that these were available, so I put it up in, in my shop. And it's just like, every single fan of jazz needs these in the collection. And they are pretty affordable, like, they aren't that expensive. And the sound quality is... <clears throat> really really good and i have had original pressings of these they are dirt expensive and these sound just as good as those and i'm talking about the black jazz series so this is gene russell talk to my lady 1973 gene russell is the founder of black jazz and black jazz during the sort of short stint of maybe two three years recorded and released 21 records and all of the 21 records is available to buy on Real Gone Music today. And of the ones that I have heard, which is maybe half of them, they all sound fantastic. And I've actually bought every single one of the Black Jazz series for me. I think I, I like two that is coming in my next shipment for myself. But I also have some uh, duplicates in the, in the shop. Talk to my lady, 1973. One of the better ones also in of the uh, the black jazz because this is a little bit more soulful maybe than some of them the soulfulness is what really stands out with the black jazz catalog compared to other sort of um, labels of that day so the perfect blend between jazz and soul but you also have it it's they are very political like not only in the words and the lyrics and and but it, the approach and the music i mean black jazz this is important this is a extremely important jazz label and if you want to listen to it today and not shell out hundreds of euros for original pressings uh, these are super affordable sounds great check it out uh, i'm gonna play you a little bit of let's see here which one did i take listen to get uh, hmm. yeah get down uh, the second track on the first side
So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I love it. This, I mean, listen to the lineup here of, of, of this one. It's just like Calvin Keyes. Uh, you have uh, Gene Russell, obviously, Henry Franklin, and Eddie G. It's the players from the Black Jazz series, yeah. But all of them are great. So moving on uh, to Norway, this is also one that you should check out, especially if you are a prog fan from that mid sort of 70s. Uh, this is, is Saft from Norway, uh, this is called Horns, the second release from 19... Uh, I should have done my research, uh, 71. Uh, so I have two of their records in my shop, the third one is, is uh, on order. But this is the one I think that I enjoyed the most. I also have that epic uh, cover artwork. The, the, the thing with Soft is that they blend every single genre that was out there in the 70s. You have the, you know, the popular sort of prog from that day. But, and psych. But they also blend their Norwegian folk. And a huge slab of jazz rock, like a huge slab of jazz rock. And the, in my opinion, with this, this uh, with Horn, you have the perfect mix of everything. And I hope it comes through uh, on the sample that I'm going to play you. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking at my notes here also when I listen to it. And uh, I, I wrote that, uh, and on, I'm going to do the sample of this one, but. But the guitar is, is the one that stands out for me. Like the guitar sound on this is amazing. It's like late 70s Gary Moore um, and Eddie Hazel from uh, Funkadelic, like on Maggot, Maggot Brain. You know that soaring guitar that takes its time and doesn't play too many unnecessary notes like that is the sound of the guitar and it's amazing i get goosebumps just talking about it uh, so yeah uh, horn with soft <laughs> Okay, so shame on me because I know nothing about this. And if I understand correctly, if you are into blues rock, this is a classic band. These records are classic. Yeah, so shame on me. I'm doing the research now. Uh, but I actually bought a bunch of these because they are great. They are affordable. Uh, it's like, yeah, you can't go wrong and it's on Klimt and Klimt is a little bit of a hit and miss when it comes to their pressings but again it's affordable you can read the reissue uh, the, the, the uh, reviews of them and this is sounding uh, good so yeah and on transparent beer vinyl so this is a uh, living blues the Dutch band uh, this was recorded in 1971 I think it's here yeah 73 <laughs> uh, rocking at the Tweed Mill and as a blues rock group, it's hard to beat this. Like, it's really, really fucking good. Uh, so I'm going, uh, going to give you a sample of um, Diving Duck, which is actually the first. When I went to guitar school, this, that was the first uh, sort of song that we ever learned. Uh, yeah, great one. Classic. So, yeah, I'll, I'm going to leave you to it. Hope you enjoyed the, the sound samples. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just... Let me know in the comments uh, uh, or PM me through Instagram. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. <laughs>
So you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't and give this a thumbs up because it really helps, it really does. Now if you want more content then just look me up on Instagram, I put stuff up there before uh, before YouTube so a little bit of uh, what's coming up uh, so to speak. Again thank you so much and have a great day everyone and I'll talk to you in my next video.